All right, so in this video, I want to look at the 11 MK2 plugin from Avid. Now, this is just going to be an overview video, so if you're looking for sounds, wrong video. Check out the Avid video and go to the 11 MK2 page if you want to hear samples of, you know, what this sounds like. This is an overview. I'm going to just talk about what it does, what it is, and then I'll probably ramble on about what it should have been. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So right here is the 11 Mark II plugin. Now a little bit of history. First, 11 came out, 11 RTAS. Uh, it was a, like 11 LE or something. Plus we had the TDM version or the full version, but that's, that's not really important. The important part is 11 came out first, software only. Then 11 Rack came out. Now this here is just a graphical user interface, a GUI or a UI for short, that controls our physical 11 Rack hardware okay so don't don't consider this to be a plugin it's not a plugin it's just a, a control interface a user interface okay so after 11 came out then the 11 rack came out about a year year or two later when 11 first came out it was pretty limited it didn't have a ton it didn't have all of these amps and it. it didn't have all of these cabinets or microphones in it you know it was just kind of a, a certain list a required list if you will of amps and cabs that you would have to have the same was true for 11 rack and when it first came out then about a year or so after the 11 rack came out we got what was called the 11 rack expansion pack and that is also firmware 2.0 or 2.0.1 now that expansion pack came out like what was it like three four five years ago at this point and those amps everything that was added in the expansion pack there's a bunch of amps added a bunch of cabinets like the 2x12 b30 cab which is one of my favorite cabinets um uh, microphones were added in the expansion pack. Uh, we had we got a few more effects were added in the expansion pack. Okay. But the software version, just 11, 11 R TAS, whatever you want to call it, it was never updated. So it was really lagging behind the 11 rack. And it has been for, like I said, about five years, nothing was updated. Now, fast forward to about a couple weeks ago at this point, 11 Mark II was announced. Now, what 11 Mark II is, it is all of the amps, cabinets, and microphones, as well as I believe the speaker breakup algorithm was changed. Okay, it's all those things that we originally got in the expansion pack for the 11 rack. Okay, so now we have the same amplifiers, the same cabinets, and the same microphones, and the same speaker breakup algorithm, I believe, as we do in the 11 rack. Okay, what we don't have in 11 Mark II is effects. There are no effects included in 11 Mark II. Okay, let me uh, head over here, and I'll just pop this out of the way and we'll just look here go to plugin go down to avid and you'll see what you get when you buy 11 mark ii is you'll get the 11 mark ii plus 11 mark ii cab plugin yeah you can split out the cab if you want but there are no effects now there are effects in pro tools these effects that we have in the 11 rack these are now included in the pro tools support and upgrade plan it's not like the base tier you have to get that extra support i believe for like an, another $99 for the support and upgrade plugin package. They keep changing the damn name of that thing. Anyway, the point being is you can use the same effects in the 11 rack in Pro Tools. Now, they're not integrated in our Mark II plugin. Let me mention one thing. The reason why my 11 rack editor is not closing every time I click around here in Pro Tools like it usually does is because I'm using a program called Always On Top. All right, right there it is, Always On Top. Just run that, select the window, press Control and Spacebar, and it keeps that window focused. Actually, I actually have a video on that. But uh, just look around the internet for Always On Top. It's a free program. It's really great for keeping your editor open. But anyway, let's get back to what we were discussing is the effects, right? So we can use those effects in Pro Tools if you have that plan and you have access to them. Come down here to Avid. And maybe I want, let's say, a BBD delay. So we have this in the 11 rack, right? Here. There we go. Same exact plugin. The difference, of course, being it's not an integrated environment, right? So... Here's our 11 Mark II plugin. In order to, you know, build up our chain, we have to have multiple plugins open. Whereas with the 11 Rack, not only are we going to benefit from physical hardware doing all that processing for us, taking that load off of, off of our computer, okay? We have an integrated environment to develop sounds and save entire preset chains without having to do a bunch of mumbo jumbo in the background to save complete chains or, or track presets, things like that. You know, you can do, but it's really kind of a hack, kind of a workaround. Uh, it would be much better if 11 Mark II had an integrated environment. Now, before I get too far off track, let's look a little bit more at 11 Mark II. But I just wanted to mention that we can, in fact, use those effects. We close those. 
let me just show you here that you know a delay at the very, very beginning of the chain that doesn't make any sense let's go here back to plugins go to avid and you know this is one thing i really dislike about the plugins from the 11 rack in in pro tools is i have to go through all these freaking plugins just to find what i want so here's our overdrive that makes sense to have at the beginning of a chain so we could set that up right and close it then what else would we want in front of our chain see i, I probably wouldn't want anything else just maybe a compressor but yeah not really just so let's go with the green overdrive then we'll open 11 mark 2 okay so here's how our signal chain is going let me just move this 11 rack editor window out of the way all right so here's our amp here's our overdrive so our signal chain is now going like this overdrive into the amp now after the amp what do i want um uh, maybe i want to use an eq now i could use any eq i could even use the ones integrated within pro tools i don't have to use the ones you know for our, our uh, 11 rack or whatever right graphic eq or parametric eq I, I don't have to use that i can use any plugin that i want so that's one thing that's i guess you could say nice but honestly if Mark II was integrated within a complete user interface, you could still use any plugin you wanted, right? You just bypass the EQ here and load it up. It's not a difficult concept to grasp. But anyway, moving on here, that's one thing I dis dislike about not having an integrated environment for all of our effects. So maybe I'd want a chorus, okay, after the amp there. So that is how our signal chain would go be running into the overdrive then our amp and cab mics and then out to a chorus then i might put a reverb on there but that's how you would set things up if you wanted to use the same amps and effects that you can get with the 11 rack in one integrated environment and again this is just the user interface you can do all of this you know from the 11 rack front panel itself or or use the 11 rack completely standalone without having to fire up your computer at all so the 11 rack is still a useful piece of gear even though now, plugin-wise, we have the same amps, cabs, and mics. Now, one thing that's kind of nice about having the same amps, cabs, and mics is, again, we can benefit from recording with the 11 rack into Pro Tools. Let our 11 rack do all that processing for us. All right, take that load off of, our, off of our computer. And with the 11 rack, of course, we can record dirty and dry at the same exact time. So do all your recording. Now, when it comes to the mixing stage, instead of reamping and sending everything back out to our physical 11 rack, we can instead just pop this plugin, 11 Mark II, right on our dry track or make a copy of that dry track just in case. Make a copy of that dry track. And then you could dial in a different tone using the same amp and cab or completely different amp and cab and then throw in your effects and things like that that way. All right, now, I want to talk a little bit more about Mark II here, because I haven't really showed you that much about it. I've really just kind of been rambling. But as I showed, we have the same amps and the same cabs as our 11 rack. We have the same microphones available, same options of, as on and off. Of course, the same parameter adjustments available. Of course, we have an input gain uh, for uh, this the software version where we don't want the 11 rack. And one thing I found using the 11 rack with 11 Mark II is the input is set up perfectly, you know, fine. Just right here, just leave it right in the middle. It, it'll probably be okay. And if you're using uh, a plugin, any plugin, not even just Mark II, a Guitar Amp Sim plugin with your 11 rack, the input you'll want to use is Guitar In, okay? So if your IO looks like this here, where it kind of says Guitar In, Mikey and L, this is the one you want. The first one, L, the left, that's the guitar. It's not really left. It's, that's just how it's uh, delineated in my IO, which I can... I'll probably change that later on. But you want the guitar input because that's our dry input. So you choose that and pop your 11 MK2 or any you know guitar amp software on that track. And then you'll get just a dry guitar track running into an amp simulator software. Okay, if you, if we, if you were to choose something like the 11 rig, right, running into your software-based guitar amp sim, then you're going to have this entire chain running into another guitar amp and that's probably not going to sound good unless you like doing, you know, like really destructive sounding things. Of course, you could bypass everything in here, but that really gets way off base. But what you usually want is just a dry guitar sound running into an amp. So I just want to mention that. So if you're going to use your 11 rack to test out or record with 11 Mark II or any software based guitar amps, then make sure your input is the guitar in input. Now, a little bit more about the interface. You see, we have every time I switch my amp, my cab changes. That's because we have this link. I can turn that off. And now when I change my amp, my cab is going to stay on exactly what is right here. 
okay it's not going to change now i can of course change the cabinet however i want and if i put on link it automatically changes to the matched cab what avid thinks would be a matched cab okay but i can still change my cabinet even with this link on so i can change that and then our link turns blue letting us know that we have made a change okay now if i go to change here now it's going to go back to the matched cab all right as far as microphones exactly the same as the 11 rack exactly the same microphones if we choose like a bass cab then you'll have a couple different options uh, that aren't present on all of the guitar cabinets okay of course on off uh, speaker breakup i believe this has been upgraded the algorithm has been upgraded to the erxp version that was included in the 11 rack we have bypass you know a uh, bunch of different options depending on the amp that you choose okay and of course we have our gate there and that's really about it for the software we have a output knob there and as i mentioned the input knob also included is a ton of presets even some by brendan small of metal Ocalypse fame right he really should get a banana sticker for <laughs> contributing to this program <laughs> Uh, I will mention that these presets are not compatible with our 11 rack and our 11 rack presets are not compatible with software version so you can't mix and match your presets okay now I believe I've told you everything about the software now it's time for me to ramble and tell you what this should have been what 11 mark 2 should have been and maybe it still could be I don't know but what it should have been is we already have this great user interface for the 11 rack, right? So why not make the same interface here, this entire interface with all of our options and our, and our whole signal chain, all of our options here, of course, remove the things that are dependent upon the 11 rack, like our true Z input and anything that is dependent on the hardware. Remove that, also remove the ridiculous classifications that we can only use certain effects in certain slots, remove that. And just let me load my Mark II within this graphical user interface, make this a plugin that can host my Mark II plugin, right? And then let me choose all of the 11 rack effects. I mean, these were 11 rack effects originally, but this was an 11 rack effect. So let me choose these effects from within a graphical user interface, but as a plugin. So this would access our plugins list. So if I wanted a green overdrive, instead of having to come here and go through this, where's my green overdrive, blah, 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 blah. There it is. Okay. What else do I want in my signal chain? That's it's messy, it's what it is. It's just messy and it could be easier for guitar players in setting up presets, sharing presets. Every other guitar amp simulator plugin out there is, a, is an integrated environment. That's what 11 Mark II should have been. I mean, look at any of them, Amplitude, Guitar Rig, now maybe not Bias, that's not really integrated. It sounds great, but it's not integrated. And it's one of the main things that I don't like about it is it's not integrated, although there is Bias effects now, which, it's pretty cool, but I, have, I don't have the full version. I'm just demoing that out. But I do have the full version of the Bias Amp, which is pretty cool. They really should make that one integrated program, just like 11 Mark II should be completely integrated. But uh, let me just show you here something like Waves Audio, the GTR3. So we'll just pull up this tool rack here. All right, here it is. Again, I'll move my 11 Rack editor. Now, something like this is what Mark II should have been. It should have included, again, if they didn't want to use... A user interface that they already have done just remove the code for the 11 rack recode it so it can access the plugins that are already in pro tools or even better yet include all the plugins with 11 mk2 include them include this integrated environment and then split out the plugins so people who prefer to work with inserts versus integrated environments they can still do that that way we have options i prefer i personally like to work especially when setting out presets in an integrated environment i don't want to have a whole list of inserts here that it makes it difficult to save everything in one file and recall it. And if they didn't want to use the interface they already had, they could build something, you know, like GTR3, uh, Amplitude, anything like that, where you have your stomps, where I can go through all my stomps here. I'm not having to dig through an insert list. I'm, everything is right here. Everything that has been made for guitar, set up for guitar, tuned for guitar is right here and I can easily choose it in my pedal board. I can hop over to my amp list, change my amps, uh, change my cabinets, change my microphones, all in an integrated environment. You have a tuner, of course, preset lists, things like that. Okay. And I should also mention GTR3, even though this has nothing to do with GTR3, you can move your amp block to wherever you want. So that would be nice to do as well. Because as you know, I mean, we can move our amp block here 
in the 11 rack, but one thing we can't do is separate the cabinet. So that's one area where the uh, software version is nice because we can actually bypass this cabinet and load up just the cab plugin, which I'm gonna get to in just a moment, but they could easily do that within, within this same user interface that's already completed. Just remove the code for the rack, set it up to run natively in Pro Tools, and let me load my Mark II plugin in here and set up my presets that way. It's a lot easier to load presets, find presets, build your sound within an integrated environment. And you, if you still have the option to load individual plugins. Something like this would have been a lot better if, if they would have done that with Mark II. Now, Mark II, as far as sound goes, how does it sound? To me, it sounds exactly the same as the 11 rack, um, which of course sounds good, but one thing you have to realize is you're gonna have to start throwing on effects if you want more uh, complicated sounds, I guess you'd say. If you don't want just bass, guitar amp and cabinet tones, then you're going to have to really start digging through your insert list there to build things up. Now, the reason why I mentioned the guitar tool rack on Wave GTR3 is uh, they include, let me just close this here. So I'm okay. So they include, come down here to Waves Audio, they include separate plugins for the uh, different components of GTR3. So if I just want just the amps loaded, boom, just the amps. Whereas with Mark II, that, that is what we have. We have just the amp and just the cab. So this would be sort of similar, right? But what GTR3 did, what Waves did, was they also included, as we just saw, the entire tool rack. So that's one integrated environment. So here that interface is, and as I've just shown, you know, you can choose your stomps within this environment, change your amps. Uh, you even have two amps here. So you have two cabs, two mics. Tuner preset all of this in one environment, but they didn't stop there. They also included separate plugins uh, right here. We can see maybe we want two stomps, just two stomps. We don't want amps. We don't want a full six stomps. We just want two stomps, Well, you can do just two stomps and right there. It is. So maybe I just want two stomps, pop that in, pop that in, or that doesn't really make any sense, but whatever. And you can have just two stops. So Avid could have done, and maybe they will, I don't know, but they could have done the same thing for Mark II. They could have made an integrated environment and then split things out for the people that prefer to work with inserts, right? So let me go here to say, maybe I want four stops. So um, you should check out Wave GTR 3, by the way, just for the stops, since the 11 rack doesn't have a lot of different effects. You know, they're the basic effects that you need, even when using you know, I'm talking about the 11 rack specifically now, even when using the 11 rack, it's nice to have some software based stomps that you can add into your tone. Or of course, if you're using something like 11 uh, Mark II or even bias amp, right? Of course there's the bias FX, but wave GTR three is uh, pretty cool too. I like the way they implement these separate plugins of just the stomps, just the amps, if you want it, or if you want the whole thing, you can have the whole thing. So if you have something like wave GTR three, it makes it a lot easier to set up. So maybe I want a metal distortion there. Uh, maybe some sort of an EQ. This is all going to be before the amp. Um, what else would I want? That's pretty. That's probably all I would want. I'll put a little volume on there. I might want to bypass it or not use it, but I don't know. So we have three stomps here, and then we might want to load our amp. So here's 11 Mark II. Then we have our amp. And then after our amp, we want effects. Now, of course, like I said, we can use any effect at all, but we'll just use a stops here. So we'll use our six stops. All right, so here that is. And all of this would be coming after the amp. So I might want an EQ, um, I might want a compressor, I might want a pitcher, although I should probably put that before, but whatever. Let's put a reverb, tone just for fun, and a volume. So there you go. So then you could easily have, you know, sort of an integrated feel if you have something like 11 Mark II to, uh, that way you're not having to dig through your insert list if you don't want to, if you have something like, uh, you know, Waves GTR3. So that's that's kind of how our signal is running. The guitar would be running through our stops at the beginning, then running through our amp and cab, and then running back out through there. Okay, so that's, in my opinion, what 11 Mark II could have been, should have been, and hopefully Avid will do something like that. I have no idea if they will, but it would be very nice if they would make an integrated environment for this, because like I said, it sounds just as good. The amps and cabs, microphones, whatever, they all sound just as good as the 11 rack, but what it lacks is usability. 
it's not as easy to use as firing up the 11 rack or firing up amplitude or firing up guitar rig it's it just it could be better it sounds good it's worth the purchase and one thing i will mention is if you have 11 le rtas tdm whatever the full version of the first software version of 11 you can go ahead and upgrade right now to 11 mark 2 which is totally worth the purchase for only 50 bucks now you have to act by december 31st of this year 2015 so if you have that license on your iLock, go ahead and upgrade it for 50 bucks. That way you get all the nifty new amps and uh, cabinets and microphones, whatever. Because it's a very usable plugin, it just could be a lot more usable, a lot more user friendly, and a lot more competitive in the guitar uh, amp simulator marketplace. Much more competitive if it was an integrated environment, if it included everything. Because let's face it, that's what pretty much every guitar amp simulator program is an integrated environment with effects, amps, cabs, you know, everything you need to produce your uh, guitar tone all within one plugin. And, you know, let's visually show that with, say, Gia GR5 here, Guitar Rig 5, which is a really great uh, plugin as well. By the way, I wouldn't buy it alone. Not that it's not worth it alone, but I would get it within the complete bundle. It's just a lot cheaper to buy complete than to buy the single plugin. Let's just grab stuff here. So this, is, to me, Again, it's a lot easier to work with because we have our amp here, a bunch of effects, we have the control room, which is absolutely great. I absolutely love the control room. A bunch of effects here that and load, and you can, of course, add whatever you want here. You see, I'm going through a bunch of effects right here within one environment so I can really set up exactly what I want for my guitar tone in one environment. I'm not having to go back and forth between uh, different inserts and then having to make track presets or anything like that, uh, which is sort of a workaround hack, as I mentioned. But something like this is a lot easier to use. Plus, again, this video is not about Guitar Rig 5. Guitar Rig, um, it's, it's more than just for guitar. There's actually a whole effects section that you can use on pretty much anything. Uh, it's a pretty cool program if you uh, don't have it. You know, So here's one for those drums. All kind of stuff you can do with Guitar Rig, more than just guitar. But being that we're focusing on uh, guitar, you know, working with something like this is a lot easier than working with a bunch of separate inserts, again, in my opinion. Okay, I think I've talked enough about what it should have been. Let me uh, go a little bit more about something else we can do with 11 Mark II. Remove all this stuff here. At least most of it. Now, I mentioned earlier that when you buy 11 Mark II, which you'll get an iLock license, by the way. This is authorized by iLock. You'll get the Mark II plugin and the Mark II cab plugin. Now, I already have Mark II loaded right here. We'll just press our little target icon so it stays up for us. And I've already set up this track on a bus to bus it out. Okay. Now, since we have that cabinet plugin, what we can do is set up multiple cabs. So basically one amp running through two cabs, three cabs, a thousand cabs if you want, I guess. You know, if you want to get crazy with it, why not? That's something you can do if you want to use the cabs of Mark II. Now, obviously we could already do this if you liked using impulse responses, but now the cabinet has been separated. If you want to use these cabinets and you want it to be, say, a double mic cabinet, sort of, you know, sort of simulated double mic cabinet or two different cabinets with one amplifier, you can do that. So again, 11 Mark II is on our insert. Pow. Now, if you want effects before that, keep in mind, you'll need to put Mark II down somewhere else on your insert list. And if you run out of inserts, uh, let's come here to our fast menu. Just come to your inserts F through J and show those two and you can add five more inserts. Okay. Turn that off. So just keep that in mind. If you want like distortion or a chorus or phase or whatever before the amp, you need to set that up like this. So grab your MK2 on your track, set it to bus out to absolutely any, anything you want pretty much. Okay. Bypass your cabinet. It's going to be very important to bypass your cab. Then on another track, it can be an audio track or an aux track. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on exactly what you want to do and how you want to work. Uh, you can't record on an aux track, so it would just be sending this signal through these channels. Okay, so it wouldn't be recorded on these tracks. You could record the guitar on this track, but it wouldn't be recorded on these tracks here. Okay, this is not really a mixing video. I just want to tell you that you can use aux tracks if you want to use aux tracks. Or you can use audio tracks and you can actually record uh, the signal coming through. All right, uh, we'll just use audio tracks just for fun. Why not? Go to your plugin, 
come down to Avid, and let's choose Cab. So here's one Cab plugin, and I'll grab another one. Avid and Cab. So we'll just do a two cabinet setup. Left, right, here's our amp. So again, we set this up to whatever our output is. So bus one and bus one, there we go. So now the amp right here and any effects you might have in your chain, all of this is gonna be sent out bus one. Bus one runs into these two tracks. So that signal, whatever it is, is gonna run through this cab and this cab, the same exact signal. So it's just like having one amplifier and uh, two cabs hooked up to it. Now, you can, of course, pan these however you want. So maybe you want it uh, left and right. And then, of course, you can set up your cab type. Maybe you want to simulate sort of the same cabinet. So we'll just say this 4x12 Classic 30. So maybe you want to simulate the same cabinet with different microphones on the cabinet, which is you know a, a very usual thing to do when recording an actual guitar. You'll have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, microphones right on a cabinet so we could do that so now we have two different microphones this one's off axis it's on axis and we could have it set up like that we could you know even add another cabinet if we wanted what what you wouldn't want to do unless you just want to get creative is add another cabinet on the same track because then this signal would be running through this signal would be running through this cabinet and then this cabinet and this signal would be running through that cabinet so you can do that but you know, that's probably not what you want unless you're just trying to do some creative stuff. But that's how you can do it. Also, if you want to simulate two different cabinets, so now we have two different cabinets uh, with one amplifier with the same exact tone, the same exact guitar coming through our amplifier into these two cabinets. And we can pan that however we want. Okay, so that's one thing you can do with the 11 Mark II. Of course, as I mentioned, we could already do this if you use uh, impulse responses, right? So... Something I really like is red wires, mix IR2. And in my opinion, you know, using impulse responses is probably going to sound better than almost, almost any integrated cabinet uh, that comes with a, uh, a guitar program. Almost. I say almost because Guitar Rig 5, you can kind of get it uh, pretty well because you have the control room. Amplitude has really stepped up their game with Amplitude 4. TH3, I think you can actually load impulse responses in TH3, so that's actually nice. So that would actually be a very nice improvement too. Here in 11 Mark II and the 11 Rack, let us load our own impulse responses. You know, that would just, that would free you up from having to make any more cabinets because there are already plenty of impulse responses out there. But anyway, we could we could already do this separate cab thing if you use something like MixIR2 from Ridwires, which definitely check that out. You know, this is actually a pretty cheap plugin. I think it's like 50 bucks, but don't buy it on its own. Just buy the big box bundle. That way you have all of your uh, impulse responses you know, that you're ever going to need included with this plugin. But uh, like I said, we could already do the multiple cabs if you use something like this. Okay, so I think I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to talk about with 11 Mark II. Overall, it's good. You know, it's a good plugin. I definitely think you should buy it, especially if you have the software version of 11 already, 11 LE, Artaz, this, you know, this, the first software version of 11. Now, do you need it if you have the 11 rack? No, you don't need it. Is it nice to have? Yeah, it's nice to have. One, it's just nice to have cool stuff. It's nice to have new things. As I mentioned for reamping, it's very nice to have the ability to use the same amp and cabinet and mics as I'm using here. And also, even though it's a little bit clunky, in my opinion, uh, you know, we can use the same exact effects uh, as long as you have access to them. Of course, you have that uh, upgrade plan, or I believe you can buy them in Pro Tools first. I'm not sure if they've uh, let you buy them within uh, full Pro Tools or not. But uh, yeah, you can use the same effects, but, you know, it's kind of hard to find them. Here's a white boost. But yeah, you could uh, use the same exact effects, same exact cab, and... Uh, same as like amp and cab, speaker breakup, so you could get the same setting or a different setting, different sound than your 11 rack. That makes it a little bit easier uh, as far as reamping. If you want to stick with the 11 products, you know, it makes it a little bit easier reamping because you're not having to physically send the tone back out and re-record it because you you can already record that same exact guitar tone, the dry tone and the dirty tone. Okay, at the same time, just make sure you record that dry guitar tone as i mentioned make sure that's guitar in then you could have another track that's your rig right so make sure you have that dry tone and then just pop your plug in whatever it happens to be by the way it doesn't have to be this 
But if you want to stay in the 11 world, just pop 11 MK2 on it. Then you have the same uh, effects and everything that you can dial in a little bit more. And as, I, as we mentioned, the ability to uh, split out the cabinets and set up a different sort of tone like that. Okay, so I'm about all talked out here. Talked way too much about this plugin. But I said, there's some things uh, you may want to check out and consider. You know, mix IR2, check that out if you want some really cool impulse responses. Again, that's that's redwires.com. Uh, just buy the big box bundle. It's a little pricey, but not really for what you get. You get a ton of impulse responses. You'll never use all of them. 11 MK2, definitely check it out if you like the sounds of 11. If you have an 11 rack, I still think it's worth it to get 11 uh, Mark II. You know, they, they did a good job on really simulating exactly what these specific amps sound like. They did a good job. Of course, you can never have too many toys, so... Of course, check out Amplitude, check out uh, Guitar Rig 5. Again, if you're going to go with native instruments, don't buy things individually. Just, just buy complete. Save yourself the trouble later on. Just buy complete. Get everything all at once. Amplitude 4, I think I mentioned, is pretty cool. What else? Uh, Bias. Bias is probably one of my favorite guitar amp plugins uh, right now. Positive grid bias amp. Okay, I'll just open it up real quick here. So here's bias. It's really cool because you can really uh, you know, change everything you want about your guitar sound. The tubes, the tone stack. You know, you can change the type of tone stack. You can really build amps from the ground up, which is really cool. And the cabs, you know, the integrated cabs, they sound amazing. Uh, and of course, there's an amp match feature, at least in the uh, in the pro version of it so that's one of my favorite software based amp simulators right now has been for a while you know as far as software goes but hardware the 11 rack is still great i use it constantly i use it all the time you get amazing sounds out of it especially if you spend the time to dial things in and set things up for your track you know gain down there all right guys so that's pretty much it about this overview for 11 MK2 and then a long rant about what it should have been and a bunch of other products that are available to sort of uh, you know push this up to the next level since this doesn't include an integrated environment but uh, you can use things like I mentioned like Wave GTR3 and use those uh, stops in that integrated environment make it a little bit easier uh, to make presets and things like that okay but go check out 11 Mark II it's a good plugin it's Especially if you have the uh, software version of 11, the first version already. You know, it's really no brainer at 50 bucks. Go check it out, man. Avid.com. Of course, I'll have the link to 11 Mark II in the description. Be sure to hit that like button, and I am out of here.